Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Welcome to episode 5 of Building My Pole Barn House. Well, today the cement truck showed up, and so we're pouring all the cement in the holes, getting those ready so we can set trusses here soon. So if you watched one of my previous videos, you saw I was putting plumbing in under the slab before we pour the floor and all that. And then I got my trusses all set, and I'll link to that video right here where you can find it where I was setting all the posts by myself if you're interested in doing that and then the cement truck showed up and we're getting ready to put cement in the holes here right in the middle of it and next thing we're going to be doing here I'm going to show you this in just a little bit in the video here about notching the post to, for the trusses to sit on so that's going to be next so bear with me my footage is a little shaky but I'll do the best I can so next I'm going to try to show this if my battery holds up on my camera here I wanted to show you the laser transit that I'm using this is a CST Burger. I really like this particular model. This one is the RL25HV. I really like it because it's really accurate. If you're looking for this thing, it's a worthwhile investment if you're going to be doing a project like this instead of renting it a bunch of times. I'll include a link in the video description below the video where you can find one if you want and you can check it out there. And so I just want to show you really quick how I mark all my posts. Okay, so it's dark enough you can actually see the laser line right on my pencil line there. So, um, see how it's bouncing off the, the line there? So what I do, since I could see the laser line, I made a little mark there. And then I use this thing and hold it right on that notch to check it. So see if I hold it right on that line, it's saying it's right on. So that's all I do to check it with that notch right there in the middle of the receiver there. And then I just held my square up there where that mark was and just made a mark both sides. And it's kind of nice that my laser light is on because it shows me that it agrees with my square. It's close enough anyways, but sometimes these posts aren't perfectly square from one side to the next. So, but you can see there it agrees very well with my line. So anyways, that's how I go around and do it on all the posts that gets you a level line to know where to notch your trusses how to figure floor height and all that good stuff so it's very essential to have one of these all right so I wanted to show you my first post is notched where the truss is gonna set up there so I wanted to show you what I did I'll start on the other side so first of all what I wanted to show you is the mark that I came up with and I showed you that last night when I had my transit up to get a level line across I had to figure out what my final floor height was going to be from there and you can see some of my scratches here excuse my writing but anyways basically I had to figure out what my final floor height was going to be down there and I had to figure in two inches of foam under the floor plus a four inch cement floor plus what I wanted for gravel underneath because I want a little bit of gravel so I can pack it down get rid of some of this dirt around here and stuff so Anyways, I ended up with this. I want a 10 foot ceiling, and I ended up with 4 foot 9.5 in the top of my floor, so that leaves me with 5 foot 2.5 from this line up. So 62.5. So, what I did, I have to think of ways to do this by myself since I'm working alone. What I did is I got a 2x4, cut it at 62.5 since I don't have anybody to hold my tape, and I just anchored it with one screw here. And see what I did is I made it right flush with the line down there. And then so it's perfectly in line. So that, wherever that ends, is where I'm gonna notch my truss. What I did is I just put one screw in. I just made a flush along with the edge of the post like this. And then that way I know it's square. And when I'm up there working, I can just move this two by like this out of my way after I get my mark. So now that I'm done, I'm gonna take this one loose, move it on to the next one over here and show you the process. Okay guys, so I didn't show you all of it, but once that is notched there, then on the other side, if your post is sticking up taller, 
you'll want to cut it off too. You can cut it off after the truss is up, but it's easy to do it now. Like that one wasn't quite high enough that I had to worry about it, but on this one, since I'm using two by eight trusses on the top cord, on this bottom edge here, it's eight and a half, so I made it eight and a quarter just to be safe so it doesn't stick up for sure. And as you can see, I put a 412 on it, on the top there. So if you have a post that sticks up higher than that, that's what you can do beforehand to get it all ready to go. All right, I wanted to shoot a quick video and show you I got the posts all notched on the top. The double trusses are gonna go in the middle there. But then on the end out here, this is what I do. So you can see the full post is gonna stay there full width this one doesn't get notched but actually what happens is this whole end truss drops down five and three quarter inches which is a two by six at a 412 it's five and a half normally but at the 412 angle it's five and three quarter and what's gonna happen is that truss is gonna sit right out on the outside of there it's gonna be a single truss and then the purlins are gonna run out over top of that truss for the overhang so I'll show that later but basically I tack it up there with screws and I do the same thing, I just use that 2x, it's hanging over there, you can kind of see it, but I just use that 2x, and once I was done notching all the middle posts, and I cut it down 5 and 3 quarter, then it gave me the exact height. And I screwed it fast and got my height up there. And so what I use is these timber locks right here, they're 6 inches, so I put 5 of those bad boys in there. So yeah, just wanted to show you, so I put 5 in those. That has a lot of sheer strength. And then once the truss is up there, we'll put a couple more in them, in the middle ones, and on that end one over there. So, just wanted to show you how I did those. Hey guys, so really quick, I wanted to talk about cutting purlins before setting trusses up there. I'm gonna get all my purlins cut beforehand. And what I wanted to talk to you about is a proper measurement for this. So say for example, this post right here is 10 foot center to center. But since my notch is on that side and on that side, same side on both, what you want to do is you want to measure center to center on the posts. Then you got to deduct three inches for the thickness of the double trusses, plus about an eighth inch, I figure, for the metal patches and all that. So overall, if it's 10 foot, you want to go nine foot eight and seven eighth, because it'd be nine foot nine plus that eighth inch for the metal plates. So nine foot eight and seven eighth. So I wanted to show you quick my setup here. This is my stack of lumber here. And this works really good if you have a setup like this. If you have a chop saw, I got one here, a DeWalt that I borrowed from work. And so I set this up on saw horses. And you don't have to get this extravagant if you don't want, but basically I put three two by sixes together, screwed them together. What I ended up doing, cause this table height here is three and a half. So I just wanted to have some flat two by so I cut some shims and put under there every so far and down through there. And then now for my nine foot eight and seven eight, you get your first one, get a nice straight two by six and then you cut it to length up there. Then you come down here, screw a block on that way and screw a block on that way. Then that thing can't move on you. So now, I gotta cut like 140 some at this length because over there there's like four bays of 10 footers. They take 37 each in my particular situation. So that's a lot. So I'm gonna set up here and cut a bunch of these and if you make a jig like this it makes it so much easier and then they're accurate every time. And then the other thing you wanna do is you wanna sight them for the bow while you're at it. See how if you look down a board, if it crowns up or down, that's what I call the bow. If it crowns up or down, that one's pretty straight there, but so what you want to do is you want to have the crown up always because of the weight of the snow and whatever all, you always want to have the crown up. So I mark those right as I'm cutting them and then they're all set to go. Once I stack them over there out of the way and ready for when the forklift is here, then they're all set to go. So just wanted to show you a quick and easy way, if you have a chop saw, to do a whole bunch at a time. That'll save you a lot of time and they'll all be perfect that way. Hey guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for setting trusses is next in episode six. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.